Your Excellency, Dashos, distinguished guests, participants, students, uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. Uh, to add to the nervousness of uh, the time, uh, there comes the warning from the moderator. Uh, at the outset, I would like to commend uh, the efforts of uh, CDCL and uh, the College of Science and Technology for having the second round of uh, the construction seminar. Uh, the theme is, uh, of course, emerging trends in construction technology, construction uh, industry rather. Uh, I believe uh, there are so many sessions, uh, very technical sessions on a wide range of uh, subjects pertaining to the construction industry. And uh, mine is uh, not really one of them. Nonetheless, I'll try my best to uh, fit my talk to not only the theme, uh, the theme is emerging trends in the construction industry. And I think while there are so many uh, emerging trends that we can discuss the next two days, uh, perhaps uh, during my 20 minute talk, I will try to also look at uh, the need to look at perhaps some of the rather undesirable emer emerging trends in the construction industry from the human perspective. Uh, my topic is building our future with professionalism, integrity, and pride. And well, uh, we are all professionals here, are we? Uh, my talk is going to revolve quite a bit around uh, professionalism, and I would rather I would suggest, indeed, very strongly that uh, at least for the next two days, we claim ourselves to be professionals, and we start referring to each other as professionals. Preferably long after the conference, let us keep that trend. Claim to be professionals and refer to ourselves as professionals. I think that has the benefit of actually putting an, a moral pressure on ourselves to conduct like one. Uh, to begin with, uh, I would like to highlight that today, as I said, in this hall we have hundreds of professionals, very young aspiring students, engineers, architects, builders. If any one of us want to do something great in life, if any one of us aspire to live, live a fulfilling life, do amazing things, build amazing stories about our lives and our success, our achievements, I think today is a good time in Bhutan. Perhaps the best of times that we can have. And I say this with conviction because we have great leadership at the top. We have the tremendous blessing of ha having a very dynamic, energetic, inspirational leader in our king. Now this is a blessing that each one of us ought to count. Because we know in societies where there is failure in leadership, irrespective of how talented we are, how educated we are, how knowledgeable we are, how capable we are, it will be difficult to make a difference and to shine. So let us take uh, these opportune times where we have tremendous blessings of great leadership to measure up to the occasion to make a difference to live a fulfilling life. And I will mostly talk about professionalism, integrity and pride in the context of all of us being professionals. The hundreds of us here are key players in Bhutan's construction industry. I also know there are participants from the private sector today. All of us play a key role in taking the industry forward, in building responsibility, I mean responsible 
future for ourselves. And personally, my conviction is, if given the right inspiration, given the right triggers, given the right occasions, given the right inspiration, given the right attitude, each one of us can make a difference. 1961, we started modern construction in Bhutan. Decades down the line, it's really up to us what kinds of questions we ask ourselves. To me, I have three key questions. And that basically is the theme of my talk. Are we professional enough in the execution of our responsibilities? That's my first question. Are we doing what we do with dignity and integrity? That's my second question. And my third question is, are we really proud of what we built? These are three simple, straightforward questions which all of us can reflect on because we played a big role and we continue to play a big role in the construction sector in Bhutan. I have accepted this invitation as an engineer and now at Riggs as a student of leadership with the risk of sounding a little philosophical as I go along. But I will try my best to bring it to context. I was looking at some statistics with regard to Bhutan's construction industry and here you can read them. 15.87% of our GDP in 2017, 63% of our entire capital outlay for 2017 and 2018, and around that much almost every year. Only 2.56 of Bhutanese professionals being engaged, which counts to around 6,000 something in the Bhutanese construction industry. Hundreds of thousands of foreign workers we engage today almost close to 88% of uh, workers engaged in our construction industry are foreigners. That in 2015 was around 45,000, I think. And we have, as CEO earlier mentioned, some 4,000 construction companies in this country. I draw inspiration from a recent quote by His Majesty the King with regard to professionalism, hard work, and trustworthiness and reliability, which I'm sure many of us heard. Whenever I get the opportunity, this is one thing I focus on. That while it's good to be aware of the larger vision, the grander scheme of things, the larger picture, it's very crucial to be mindful about the small details because all big visions are composed of small parts. Just like uh, this amazing super jumbo jet. This is one of my favorite analogies to prove my point that all big visions are made up of small parts. The super jumbo jets, if we look at it in a broad way, we see an amazing machine. If we look closely into it, it's composed of petty things like nuts and bolts. And I always feel that unless we do our part in tightening the nuts and bolts carefully, your super jumbo jet will come crashing down. Even our national vision, philosophy of gross national happiness. All of us in this hall can give hours of talk on GNH, 
the four pillars, the nine domains, the 33 indicators and the 124 variables. That philosophy, that speech anyone can make. I think it's important to realize that even grand vision such as GNH is composed of these small parts. We have things like time use. If we as a society want, want to fulfill our aspiration of a, of a GNH society, then there are elements in the GNH indicators such as time use. How many hours I sleep, how many hours I work, how many hours I spend on non-work activities influence whether we as a society achieve gross national happiness or not. And who really controls how many hours I sleep? I have a role at the individual level to play in the nation achieving our vision of gross national happiness. Similarly, community vitality, donations, speaking of local dialects. Much of these small parts are under the control of individual citizens and professionals like you and me. And unless each one of us, with the potential that we have, do not do our bit, it will just be about giving speeches on GNH. Similarly, in the construction industry, we have great visions. We want to bring in technology. We want to build monumental legacies. But it's very important that you and I, as professionals in the industry, have this at the back of mind, our mind every single moment, irrespective of whatever is in our front. Whether it's designing, whether it's planning, whether it's surveying, whether it's drawing, whether it's actual construction. Every moment, I feel we need to be mindful about that. So what I'm basically saying is it's, it's important. I fully agree it's important to be aware of the larger vision. I'm definitely not uh, discounting that. But I am saying basically it's very important to see the larger vision from where we are. That means, so it's very important to realize the larger vision and it's in fact, very important to see the larger vision from where we are. As a draftsman, as a bridge engineer, as a consultant, as a supplier, as an engineer, as whatever. And each one of us, as I said, each one of us has the capability of making a difference. Each one of us can contribute to the larger vision from where we are and you can read this little story about President John F. Kennedy and the janitor at NASA yourself. If a janitor, a sweeper sees his or her role as putting a man on the moon, I think professionals like you and I can do thousand times more. Professionalism we need to keep a few things in mind. To be a professional, of course, as I said, we are all professionals and we can keep on, keep building on that. We need to be knowledgeable. I see a lot of young engineers here from CST. The four years that we have, you have to use it judiciously so that once you graduate and become an engineer, you are a very knowledgeable engineer. If you are a bridge engineer, you better know bridge engineering in some good depth. For those of us already in service, we can, already, we can always build on what we have, what we know, by learning on the job, by mastering the trade, by reading. In Singapore, I attended a meeting is that a warning? In Singapore, they encourage their people to read, spend 80% of reading time on 
something related to their profession so that you become even more professional, more knowledgeable, more competent in your area of work. To build professionally, we need to bring in technology. So much was said about technology this morning. And I know there are sessions on timber construction, for example. This is a nine-story building in Brisbane, completely made of timber. And there's another one, Canada, 163. Uh, I can't remember the height, but it's in fact the tallest uh, timber building in the world. I think usually when we have issues in the construction industry, we most of us put the blame on, for example, the lowest bidder issue. I think the lowest bidder issue is not an excuse to do shoddy work. If budget is less, accordingly you can, you may not be able to use most expensive components, but you can still do a good work. And that calls for us to be knowledgeable, to be competent, to keep learning, to keep mastering the trade and to take care of the small details. I remember His Majesty once equating integrity to Thadamchi. And all of us know Thadamchi very well. Most of us in this hall are Bud Buddhists. Most of us are indeed Buddhists. Thadamchi is a tremendous Bhutanese Buddhist value. We are doing very well on the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index. In 2015, I think we were 30, ranked 36. Last year, we were ranked 25. That's a great leap forward. And we claim ourselves to be the best country in terms of corruption index in South Asia. Of course, the question need, we need to ask is whether South Asia is a good benchmark to look at corruption perception index. You look at the top five countries, some of them are repeatedly coming in the top five least corrupt countries. Can't we be there? Why should it not be possible? And each one of us have a role to play. And most of us here are public servants. We are salaried people. Our job is to serve. And we need to do that with integrity. It's not just about corrupt, outright corrupt practices, bribery. Corruption also, not having integrity also means not exercising diligence or due diligence. Wasting your time and not doing your job professionally and with diligence to me is corruption. Indifference. Seeing things are going wrong and not caring about it is corruption. Since 1961, when we started the five-year plans, we have been talking about self-reliance. 55, 55 years down the line, here we are still talking about self-reliance. Infrastructure plays a key role in achieving self-reliance. And we need, we have, whatever we build will last for 30, 50, 60, 70 years. We need to build them well. After all, we live in the country of the four harmonious friends. We believe in interdependence. We believe in doing good for the others. We, doing, we believe in serving the larger cause. Things like corruption, indifference, not exercising due diligence should be out of the question for actually professionals like you and me who live in the country of Timbuktu and GNH. Can you move it from there? Whether we are happy with the profit, the margins we make of a project, or whether we are happy with what we have built, 
sometimes perhaps even at a loss. Because as I said, what we build will last. We are talking about roads, buildings, bridges, tunnels, hydropower plants. It's not only about building concrete jungles. It's about seizing the moment to build the gases. Rashu is minus one minute actually. I think the timekeeper is a Rick's alumni, I, I suspect. <laughs> He's considering my technical difficulties. I'm just about done. I think what we need to be contributing to is, as professionals, really building a culture in this country where quality is appreciated. We're building monumental structures beautiful, amazing structures is appreciated. Where we build structures that you and I can 50 years down the line tell stories about and celebrate. I think that culture is in a way getting dominated by the other motive of profit. We don't want to be a builder who will have to face the inconvenient question 50 years down the line what is it something that you have built over your lifetime and you really have no answer and finally i would like to make this point that building with dignity and pride is important because what we build what we build reflect not only our capabilities as a nation and a people it reflects our national character you can move on i have two pictures What we build not only reflects our capabilities as a nation and a people, what we build reflects our national character. And this is, I think, a very important point for all of us to remember, even as we go forward contributing to the construction industry in Bhutan. And I, I come back to re-emphasize the point which, with which I started, that is that if you want to make a difference in this country, the time is now because we have great leadership at the top, whose only concern is to take this country forward, to help ourselves realize gross national happiness, and to have a prosperous, united, successful country for all times to come. So seize this moment, count the blessings of great leadership in this country, count our own potential and capabilities and make a difference. Thank you very much.